as we are going to honor our graduates today and talk about their future and about what God would have in store for them. The challenge that I have is not just for our graduates. The most important message that Jesus gave to us is the message that I'm going to give to you today. It was the Sermon on the Mount. And he was about ready to bring the sermon to a conclusion. And he brought a challenge. Now the Pharisees were there, and the Pharisees rejected Jesus. They, they despised Christ, and they were wanting to put him to death. And Jesus was about communicating to the condition of the heart and the challenge that he has in front of them. And he wanted to just share some things and talk. And he wanted to say this, there's going to be great days and there's going to be very difficult days. But I want to let you know that it's not just going to be easy to be a follower of Christ. There's going to be cost involved with it. And in those costs, it's going to take a decision within your life. You can't just say, I'm a follower of Christ. It is going to be work. It's going to take work. And he started this in Matthew chapter 7. And I'd like to start in verse 15 and just get the picture of, of people that were opposing him were standing around and Jesus was just proclaiming his message. This is the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ, God's son who came to redeem you and I from our sins. He is communicating this and this is his message to his church. These are powerful words. He says this, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way which leads to destruction. And there will be many that go there. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there will be few who find it. And he says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wondrous works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And then he gets into one of the most important sections, his conclusion of the entire sermon. He wants to tell us that we have a life that we're building. And that life that we're building, every area of our life, we're building a house represented in our life. And what you do with your life, what you do with your house matters. And how you build your life matters. The decisions that you make matter. He says this, therefore whoever hears these things of mine and does them. See, we can't just hear. Whoever hears these things that I just talked to you about and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was that fall the contrast is nothing about the house the house your life looks the same there's nothing about your life that we would say you are or you're not a follower of Christ but it does say anyone that hears these things and does them I will liken him to a wise master builder. But if you hear these things and you do not do them, you will be called a very foolish individual. So there's three things I want to share and I want to share briefly. The first thing is the firm foundation. The firm foundation. 
In uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and all you're getting, get understanding. The decisions that you make, the life that you build, the principles that you stand for, the things that you have passion for, we have to understand that if we do these things, the very will of God, God can bless us and he can give to us the very joys of our life. Because every decision, the life that we make, whether we're 18 or whether we're 50 years old, the life that we make, it must be built on the rock of Jesus Christ. The stands that we make, the filters that we use, the principles that we stand for must be godly. In Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The knowledge of the Holy One. How do I make my decisions? What is it that motivates my life? How do I understand that I need to make those proper decisions? I have to do this for a purpose. And that purpose is understanding that there's going to be one day, there's going to be storms. There's going to be uh, 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 things that come upon your life that you cannot understand and you have no ability to stand if you do not have the foundation that's built on the rock. I want to use an illustration. It's not in my notes. I have a friend, and you have a friend that had been a longtime member of this church. And he moved to California, and he moved to California, and um, he came down with esophagus cancer. His name's Jim Lyons. And Jim had been members here since I, I was the past. He was, they, they were here when I first got here, and he, they moved a few years ago. And he came down with this cancer, and we've been praying for him, and and uh, Jim is, um, unless God touches his life, he is not, he may not have another year to live. And um, we have been praying for him. He talks to me on the phone, and his first message to me, he said, Bruce, well, I'm going through this. I want to be a testimony. I want people to know that I love God. I want people to know that I'm going to be a testimony in the midst of the biggest storm that I'll ever face. And I said, Jim, be yourself. Laugh, cry, give God the glory. People will see your nature because of your joy and because Jesus is your Lord. Well, I had lunch with him a couple weeks ago. He's lost a lot of weight. Um, and he was just in the hospital. He got out of the hospital and his daughter was getting married and he didn't even get to go to the wedding. He drove to get to the wedding and he got very sick and was in the hospital again. And Well, Jim's on his way back to California right now. And uh, he just walked through that back door. And uh, a man that this church loves, respects, and prays for, Jim... We're with this fight, and we love you, and we want to make sure that every step of the journey that you take, you know that these people of this church will be praying for you, loving you, and standing beside you every step of the way. Let's give him a round of applause. How can he do that? How can he do that? How can you go through terminal cancer how can you go through a cancer that you cannot operate on and stand up in facing ultimate death you have to be grounded strongly in the rock of jesus christ you have to know that your faith is secure you have to know that the valleys that you're going through the storms that you face you have something to hold on to it is building your life on the rock of Jesus Christ, that firm foundation. In James chapter 2, verse 26, it says, Faith without works is dead. Faith, because of my faith, I want to serve. Because of my faith, I'm going to serve. But James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25 says this, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only. If you do that, you're deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of a man he is. 
but he who looks in the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forgetful and here, but a doer of the work, this one is blessed when he goes. We can't just be doers. We have to apply. So we have the, the foundation, the strong foundation, and then we have the faulty foundation. We have the, the fatal condition of a faulty foundation, and that's the sand. Listen to what it says again in verse 24. But if anyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them, he will be like a foolish man who built his, hand, his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew that and beat that house and it fell and great was that fall. Great was that fall. The difference between the two houses is not the house. It was the foundation of that house. What is the foundation of our decisions, of our life? What do we focus on? What do we do? In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26, it says, He that trusts in himself is a fool. He who trusts in himself is a fool. We have to have something bigger than ourselves. We have to have something that is more important than what I think. The Bible says, if you hear my words and you do them, you will be like a wise master builder. We have to be that wise master builder. Because in those foundations that we build upon the rock of our Lord Jesus Christ or the crumbling sand of life, when those storms hit, that is going to be the determining factor whether you're going to be able to stand in the face of adversity. You'll be able to stand in the face of challenge going to K-State. Going through Aggieville, being able to stand. I went to K-State. I didn't stand. <laughs> those times of our life, when those challenges are in front of us, and no one is around us, what do we stand for? Is Jesus something that we did because mom and dad wanted us to do it? Is the church something that we had to go to? Or is the rock of Jesus Christ primarily in my life? So when I walk away and I drive off, I am my own individual. We need to make sure, and you need to make sure, that Jesus is that rock. Because here's what's going to take place. The winds are going to come. The floods of life are going to rise. The rains are going to descend. All hell is going to be broke loose upon your life in certain areas. We have to be grounded in Christ. If we do, if we fail, if we look and say, I can handle this and I don't need God, I don't need the word of God, I don't need people to help me, what's going to take place is we're going to be tossed to and fro, and many times because we do not have a grasp in the foundation and our anchor in Christ, we walk away from God because the storms are too much. Because we weren't anchored into Christ. He was not our foundation. He is our foundation, and if he's not, he is going, the sinking sand of our own life will wither away. It is so important to make those decisions. To understand those decisions. See, pressures come from above. The rains descended. I believe sometimes God puts those storms within our life. Not every storm is from God. But storms come from God to stretch us and to make us and to, to move us to maturity. But then also, the floods came from below. When the floods come, when we are over our heads... We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. Sometimes we either turn to God or we turn to self or we turn to things. And then we become addicted to issues because we're not addicted to God. And when we become addicted to anything other than the foundation of God, we are on that sinking sand and it could be catastrophic for our lives and for our future. But then it says the winds. The winds blew. It blew so hard, the house 
our life fell apart. It falls apart. I'm, I can't tell you how many times that I see strong individuals, godly individuals, but life happens. Their faith began to fail. Their life fell apart. They were building their life, but they built their life on themselves, on what they could do, what they wanted. We had to piece their life back together. And I would tell them every day we need to pray that God will rescue you and God can handle this. And everything that we do, every thought that we have, we need to put into Christ because there is a foundation that we can change your life with. We can pour our lives back into God and God can rescue you and he can help you. But the storms are going to be relentless. Whether we're 18 years old or 60 years old, it makes no difference. Storms happen. And storms happen can be cruel, cruel, and you're not in control. You didn't cause the rain. You didn't cause the flood. You didn't cause the wind. That's life. Makes no difference whether you're the best Christian that you've ever seen or you're a heathen. It makes no difference. The storms come to all of us. Where are you anchored? What is your foundation? And when those storms come and you don't know what to do and your life feels like it's blown apart, nobody talks to you, nobody likes you, you feel like you're standing beside yourself and you're out in this world all alone. You're at your house. You're alone. Depression hits in. What do you do? The one thing that God tells us to do he is our anchor. And that when we need to do something and we need to make a decision, we can get on our knees before God and God says he's going to give us comfort and peace and direction in the midst of the storm. You see, the storm doesn't last forever. Storms come. They cause their damage. The storms leave. What we do in the midst of that storm, changes who we are. The storm can either draw us close or it can allow us to repel. What we do with that storm changes who we are. We have to be ready. We have to know that tomorrow there could be a storm. Jesus said this. In everything I talk to you about, there's two ways. You can go the narrow way or you can go the wide way. You can listen to the false prophets or you can listen to God's word. You can say that you're a believer and you don't have to be a believer. That's the sand or the rock. But I tell you one thing. If you are living your life for me, you hear my words and you do them. You are like somebody that's a master builder that built your life on the rock of Jesus Christ and that rock will never leave you. That rock will hold on with you in the midst of every adversity, in the midst of every fear, in the midst of every challenge, in the midst of every person in your life leaving you. God said he will never leave you. He will never fail you. When you feel like nothing else is working, when you feel like your family is leaving, when you feel like your dad is dying, you feel like your brother is in prison, it makes no difference. God will be beside you, and nothing else matters. When he is your foundation, you can hold on for your life, and he will never leave you. But if you don't have that, those storms get rough. We live in Kansas. We, we've been through some tornadoes. They can be devastating. They can change everything around us, and we have nothing to hold on to. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that's already been laid, and that is Jesus Christ. What we have to have, if we're looking at the storms of life, we have to have a foundation. And that foundation has to be Christ. It can't be hearing the words. It can't be saying some words. 
It has to be rooted deep, soul-searching deep. Am I truly a follower of Christ? Am I building my life on the foundation of Christ? Or am I building my life on the foundation of sand? Because those that hear the word and do the word, when the storms come, the house, your life, stands. But those that hear the word know what to do, but says, you know what, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do the God thing. I don't want to follow the Bible thing. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, his concluding verse says, And great was that fall. If I can be real with you, the Bible says, It's appointed unto man once to die. Everyone is going to die. He says, But after that is the judgment. That judgment. The Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whether he is your Lord and Savior or he will be your judge over you, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. I challenge you, let us build our foundation on the rock of Jesus Christ that can protect us in the midst of the storm. If we do that, God is going to wrap his arms around you, help you, love you, and guide you. Students, your pastor wants one thing for you. He wants you to be blessed, honored, and successful. You must put God in the decisions of your life. When you're alone, when you can make any decision that you want at any time because nobody can tell you what to do, it is deep within your soul. It's the character that you have it's the life that you desire. That is the person that God wants to bless. Will you, make, will you make mistakes? Yes. But God loves you. God wants to forgive you. And God wants to change. He wants to make this student, this life, one that can blossom into the very beautiful man or a woman of God that he can bless, honor, and change to be somebody that when God looks at you, he smiles because this is his vessel. The storm will come. Anchor deep in the foundation of Jesus. Anchor hard. Listen to the words. Not just say them. Do it for God's will, God's blessing. You will be blessed by God. That is the challenge that I believe Jesus wants for you. Why do you do what you do? Bottom line, because Jesus loves you and he wants to bless you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, we love you. And Lord, we thank you for the challenge of the, of the houses, the foundations, and understanding the storms will come and they will be great. But Lord, we can hold onto you in the midst of the storm. Just like Jim does in the midst of his battle. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for allowing us to see that. Somebody that loves you in the midst of the storm. His family that loves you in the midst of the storm. And I love you, God, that you could even allow us to question you in the midst of the storm. And you'll love us in the midst of the storm, even if we have no idea what we're doing. When we get mad at you, you still love us. And you want to direct us. And you want to help us. And you want to challenge us to grow closer to you in every storm, in every area of life. So, Lord, be with us today. Allow us to make our decisions, to follow after, to hear the word, and to do the word so we can be blessed by you, so we can be wise in our actions and our deeds. 
We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.